Thank you. Thank you very much, Portia, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a privilege to be here. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm wearing uh, 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 these two hats. Um, uh, I'm, I'm here in my capacity as the vice chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group for uh, International Religious Freedom or Belief, and I'm delighted that our, our chair, one of our chairs, Jim Shannon MP, is here, our other chair being Baroness Cox from the Lords. Um, I'm also delighted that uh, there are a, a number of parliamentary colleagues here. Um, we've, we've got uh, on, on my right Lloyd Russell Moyes MP, who will be speaking later, a uh, member of the APPG, and also Andrew Lua MP uh, and George Howarth MP, also supporters of, of our group. Uh, and the other hat that I'm, I'm wearing is as the Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief. And I'm delighted to say that um, hiding at the back, but uh, very important to, to, to supporting my role, is the Prime Minister's Deputy Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief, David Burrows. So welcome to you all, and thank you to Maris Tadros um, for inviting me to share this to chair this event. I'm a huge uh, admirer of CREED, um, the Coalition for Religious Equality and Inclusive Development, um, which was convened in 2018 by the Institute of Development Studies and uh, has a number of strategic partners and we'll be hearing from uh, speakers today uh, who represent them from uh, the Al Koi Foundation, I hope I've got that reasonably well pronounced, uh, Mariam Kanwa, and I'll uh, introduce her more uh, later. And then also we have uh, Claire Thomas from the Minority Rights Group International. Uh, delighted that you're with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and as I say, Creed has been going about four years and its work now has spanned 33 countries. Um, primarily focused working with marginalised communities in Egypt, India, Iraq, Nigeria and Pakistan. And it's been addressing the, um, the, the issues of poverty and freedom of religion or belief uh, in these communities, uh, particularly marginalised communities there. And so some really good um, on the ground research, original research, working with individuals in those communities uh, and indeed it funded by UK Aid Connect. Um, UK Aid Connect was, was premised on, on the following idea, that no single development actor has all the answers to the problems facing the poorest, most excluded people, and recognising that problems are complex and interconnected. And Creed is just a prime example of looking at how those interconnecting problems can be addressed. And, and so through its interactions, Creed has produced a, a, a unique body of, of research which covers, for example, the effectiveness of humanitarian programmes when religious inequalities are not addressed. Um, uh, there are very few humanitarian programmes which clearly address uh, religious uh, persecution and discrimination but Maris's leadership has uh, produced some wonderful research by Creed, looking, for example, at how the experiences of women from religious minorities have been affected by um, uh, discrimination, uh, the impact of COVID-19. Um, they've worked with local organisations to create citizens' blogs and media coverage, and to bring, they brought together faith leaders, human rights activists, and policy makers, they've trained young people, they've run education and awareness campaigns, they've created practical on the ground development projects, such as the installation of street lights and water filtration plants in low income neighborhoods, and much more. I'm glad it ends there because I'm beginning to feel quite exhausted from <laughs> what you have done. And I know that's the tip of an iceberg because I have read uh, Creed's reports and they are really, really impressive. You've developed, you have dedicated time to bring together a host of players from different disciplines and you've made it all really relevant to so many other areas of inequality and looked at how these compound and affect one another. So thank you so much for all that you do. Um, I'm going to uh, stop there because otherwise I could go on forever talking about Creed's work. Um, let's have a look now at what the purpose of today's event is. What does, what does this mean looking at uh, uh, promoting freedom of religion or belief for all? Well, we want to ensure that wherever people are, 
they have this freedom. What's the good of, of having the freedom, for example, to practice your faith if you're trapped in poverty due to education or employment discrimination, or if women feel unable to leave their homes or their neighborhoods um, without fear of being sexually assaulted or abducted for forced conversion? What if young people feel scared or intimidated by hate speech targeting them either in person, in their communities, or on social media? All of this is work that Creed has addressed. So we're here today to learn about what the evidence Creed's collected and some of the implications of the solutions that Creed can have for us, those of us who are working in this field. So thank you everyone for gathering.